Hey folks, welcome to another F64 Live interview. I'm here with Laura Tillinghast. We're gonna be talking about her class. And before we do that, I wanna reintroduce you to the TWIP audience. Absolutely. I interviewed you a gazillion years ago, right? Yep. Absolutely. Tell us about that interview and what happened with that interview. Absolutely. So I, we ran into each other at a photo event mm -hmm. and I said something very um, inflammatory about wedding photography. We got you interested and yep. um, so you invited me on your show and we didn't end up talking that much about wedding photography but what ended up happening is I had a friend that I hadn't seen in a million years. He had moved to Thailand after college and we ran out of, or we had lost track of each other and he heard the interview in Thailand, recognized my name and voice and everything and got in touch with me and I was so pleased yes. and um, besides the fact that it was fun to do the interview, yeah. it reached far reaches of the world and brought me an old friend. So yes. it couldn't have been better for me. It's the power of podcasting. <laughs> and hopefully people will, you know, enjoyed the photography part of it as well. That's cool. That's cool. So what, what brings you here to F64 Live? Well, I really, you, you don't have to talk me into going somewhere where I can just talk about photography all mm -hmm. day. And I would like to call myself a photography dork. I really enjoy lighting, talking about lighting playing with lighting yep. and anybody who also likes that I mean count me in yeah yeah it's I like a it photography too. playground here right it is yeah it's, it's it's small enough to be inspiring but large enough to be you know to expose you to new people and new techniques Absolutely. and all that stuff and you know the interesting thing about the this event in particular is this one is not about the gear mm -hmm. right it's right. not we're not talking about okay you got to have this particular kind of camera or these lights right. or you know it's more about the art form itself mm -hmm. so how do, how do you fall on that because there's been a lot of discussion online you know over the last couple of years and it's been increasingly gear focused mm -hmm. and and decreasingly art focused true and do you just mean like the what you can learn and at classes in general or oh, or just it's just the, the like what's important just the, the conversation absolutely yeah i'm not much of a gearhead yeah. so i which is what i love about you which is awesome yeah a true I, artist i do wish i had a little bit more of a proclivity for that i mm -hmm. just don't remember things the way some people seem to yeah. but i it all comes down to light and light is light. Mm -hmm. So whether you spent four thousand dollars on a beautiful brown color, or you you know spent a hundred bucks on a little um, like an alien bee or something, mm -hmm. they are going to create light the same way you put them through a. I mean, there's differences, but light is light. Yep. And so you shouldn't, if you can't afford the four thousand dollar light, that doesn't mean that you should not use light or um, jump in with both feet doing yep. the same kind of techniques. So um, I am not somebody who would ever say you. I, I feel like it's more of a problem to solve. If that gear that is supposedly needed for a shot isn't in your price range or it's not convenient for some reason, then how can we get that same result in a different way? Right. So there's, yeah. it's a, I think photography is a choose your own adventure industry yeah. and you really there's many different ways like we could shoot the same type of portrait so many different ways still get to the same thing that's going to be a little different yeah and i think that's what makes it never boring yeah it'll have your flavor on it depending on what you decide to do Absolutely. right yeah. yeah you bring your own style yeah and it's it's, it's the yeah what, what i think a lot of the industry or the the community needs to get over in some ways is the excuse of not having expensive gear and letting that stop them for whatever reason from yeah. going out and just clicking the shutter, right? right? So uh, I did an interview with Tim Engel, who's mm -hmm. another instructor yeah. here. Yeah, I know Tim. Yeah, him, and Tim was, we were talking about the idea that all photons are created equal, <laughs> right? <laughs> Whether they're created at a Home Depot or from pro photo gear, yeah. a photon is a photon. Do you agree with yeah, that? Absolutely, light is light. and. Yeah. It's all about how we shape it, not and the quality of it doesn't mean how much you spent. It's like how uh, how much can you craft it to get a certain type of light, uh, you know, and make it how you want it to be. You want it softer, harder, more intense, less intense. That's yeah. where the power is. Right. Knowing how to use the lights, not right. how much you you know. Yeah, and under, understanding <laughs> when I when I was first learning photography in the military. The, before they even let us touch cameras, mm -hmm. we, we had to learn about all the properties of light. You know, that was the first thing. It was light, and then we learned about film and film emulsions and how that stuff is built and what a silver halide is. Absolutely. All that stuff. But the, the interesting thing that got me excited about photography was just light and the different qualities, like mm -hmm. specular, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, highlight versus shadow, what makes a hard shadow, right. you know, what light looks like on a, on a, on a cloudy day versus mm -hmm. a, sun, a bright sunshiny day. Right. And I remember you know, going through the, 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 the courses and it was, you know, you, you go out on the weekend and walk around and just sort of look at shadows, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, there's clouds in the sky. 
there's no shadows underneath that car, right? right. That's <laughs> right. It. And then, so where is the sun? You know, yeah. so mm -hmm. understanding the relationship with where light's coming from and how that affects your shadows as well. Yeah. And you know, I think sometimes with digital photography, because you can skip a lot of learning about silver halide crystals and why there's even a photo being made, mm -hmm. it, you, I think what you sacrifice is a deeper understanding of light. So yeah. if you can force yourself to shoot with film, even if you've never shot with film before, you'll learn a lot. I yeah. guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that brings up the question of, of technology, though, mm -hmm. right? So technology is not slowing down, especially in photography. Yeah. You know, with our phones, our phones are getting smarter and smarter. They're right. doing computational photography and, and convincing false bokeh on mm -hmm. portrait shots mm -hmm. and all kinds of crazy stuff that we, you know, we had to work to do. That's true. Um, you know, when we were using sort of traditional photography tools. Do you, and where do you fall on the, the, the idea that, and I don't, I don't know the answer to this, but is the art of photography going away? I mean, are we going the way of, of like blacksmiths, mm -hmm. you know, because, know exactly. I mean, because things are becoming, it's so easy to, to get a great photo. It used to be, hey, I sent a roll of film to the photo mat and 12 of them came out. Awesome. You know, now thousands of them come out automatically and you can see right. them and share them. Where Absolutely. do you where do you fall on that? Well, I feel like when I transitioned from film to digital, I was in love with how fast you really once you get used to how quickly you can have you don't have to wait for a week for the mm -hmm. photo mat to find out the 12 that that, <laughs> yeah. that all never sacrifice, but I think uh, we do need to slow down and still do things the same way we did them with film. Mm -hmm. So and I we were talking about this earlier too. It's not always the best idea to do fix it in post. I don't worry, I'll fix it in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. It's still important to get it right in camera as much as possible. Yeah. But with them introducing AI, mm -hmm. that is a little bit scary because they're teaching a computer to do our job. So I do think that some areas will, things like um, e-commerce photography, where you're just, it's a product on white, that kind of stuff is probably going to become automated. It's commodity, But yeah. there's no way that a computer can replace like a uh, fine art photography mm -hmm. and you know you were bringing our own ideas to that and then figuring out how like you were talking about before you see it in your head how do i make that in the real world yeah that's something that we're bringing and the technology is allowing us to do it yeah but, but check so this out. if we take that away then what's just there just photos and that's stuff. that's the scary part i did this this discussion with the one of the artificial intelligence scientists at Skyloom. You oh know, yeah, it, actually I work with Skyloom all the time. I do yeah. some of their tutorials. Oh good, yeah. so you understand the software. <laughs> so one of, one of the AI scientists there, uh, interviews on This Week in Photo, uh -huh. um, one of the questions I asked him was, where's all this stuff going? Mm -hmm. You know, it was the end of the interview. What's, what's, what does it look like, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, is it Skynet? Is Skynet just gonna take over <laughs> in photography and it's all over for us? Yeah. Um, but he, he said something very interesting and a little terrifying. Mm -hmm. He said, in the future, then this is actually being worked on today, you'll be able to, just, to describe a photo to a computer and it will create it. Yeah. So you'll be able to say, I want a blue beach with white seagulls in the sky, the sun is on the horizon, it's around magic hour, the beach is deserted except for two people and they're both wearing white, around the same white as those seagulls, and so on and so on, right. go and it will spit the, the image out. Absolutely, but how many varieties can it, is it gonna just be, here's what you asked for, uh, can it finesse after that? I don't know. I don't, we'll have to find out, but I think if, if anybody who's been doing photography long enough, I think you'll agree with me that there can be a moment, everything you're shooting, something you're solving problems, and then everything really comes together and there's a moment of clarity the, like for me, I'm usually shooting with a subject. So the model has the app, everything is absolutely perfect. The light's just right. I capture it right. And I feel this moment of like, oh, I got a good one. Mm -hmm. And it isn't just me. The model brought that quality. The lighting was just right. I think the computer is going to have a really hard time making those magic moments. Yeah. They're going to be able to create maybe more generic photos. Yeah. But there's something about people coming together and bringing their human condition and clashing in the most beautiful way because what they're going to struggle with is emotion mm -hmm. getting um, like and especially they're creating models that don't exist yeah. are those models really going to be able to sell the emotions we're going to have to see right. i'm hoping not because yeah. i want you guys all to all of us to and all models to stay in the, Thanks, <laughs> to have some job security good job <laughs> Can you come back and do it again? Yeah, it's just, there you go. Perfect, perfect. This is F64 right here. <laughs> but that was a good timing, actually. Is that more or less? That was good. That yeah, was good. It up. <laughs>
<laughs> no, it's staying. It's staying. <laughs> All right. Okay. So here's so on that that same vein. So the yeah. So your your what you said kind of reminds me of a Jeff Goldblum. Remember the movie The Fly? Oh yeah. Where he had to teach the computer to feel in order for it to do the. So it's kind of like that. We can't teach computers to feel, mm -hmm. but can we? We'll see, right? right? Because you know, you you know, what was it, Malcolm Gladwell? Like, was it Malcolm Gladwell? But the, whatever that the book is, it talks about the uh, the singularity is near. Mm -hmm. Right? The singularity is the point where computers equal or or advance further than human processing power, right. which some would argue we're already there. If the computers can get there, now in 2019, 2020. What does 2030 look like? Yeah, exactly. Assuming we're still here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think honestly, and me included, in fact, that's, I, it's going to force us to find different ways to be yes. creative and to fight the, you know, fight the power of these machines from yes. taking over. Fight Skynet. Like, what can we bring? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there has to be um, a way for us to uh, keep our art going yeah. and it not just be about replicating something. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if there's always... Um, like with the computer, you tell it what you want. That seems like a real practical application for commercial photography. Mm -hmm. But if it's for something like for a portrait or something, I think going at it the other way and and really shooting it so that the person can bring their humanity to the shot. Yeah. I hopefully they won't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think I think I the, the, the good news is you know, as tools, if you look at AI as just another tool, mm -hmm. as tools advance, so does capability, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at like back We're in the day, adapt. we'll adapt. Just like in the, <laughs> you know, bef graphic design, take graphic design as an example. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, it was exacto knives and, you know, cut and paste and, Absolutely, you know, yeah. and doing it manually mm -hmm. to, and you had to be really good and skilled mm -hmm. and it took a long time to get really good and skilled and there were only a few people that could do it mm -hmm. then came printers that could just you know with unlimited fonts and, right, yeah. and you could just throw everything on a page so we went through an era of garbage mm -hmm. where people were creating all these crazy because they could because yeah <laughs> because the they again back to jeff goldblum mm -hmm. right just because you can do the thing doesn't mean you should right? jurassic park yeah. right so you know, so we went through that and now it kind of sh shook itself out. Now we have real designers again. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people that are skilled that are using all the tools to create work that was impossible to do mm -hmm. back then. Hopefully we'll do that again, mm -hmm. right? It, it will move in that direction and we'll have, we'll see work that was not possible today in a couple of years. Yeah. You know, Absolutely, because there's got to be some other aspect that we don't, we don't even anticipate. Yeah, yeah, we don't know what we Which don't know. It's another reason photography is exciting. It's mm -hmm. never boring. It's yeah. never like, oh, we're done. We're done evolving. It's yeah. never going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're all practicing photographers. Mm -hmm. right? Like it's like medicine, right? Yeah. It's just advancing, and we're keeping up with it. Yeah, which always scares me. <laughs> practicing doctors. I think doctors should be done practicing. Right. Yeah. The practicing <laughs> editing is a little. Yeah, nervous I don't like making. practicing medicine. Oh, I thought I was going to. Can I say something to the audience about the interruption? Yeah. I think it's so funny. So. So that person walked through because conversations like this happen all over these rooms. Yeah. So he didn't even notice there was an interview because probably there's a really interesting conversation about the future of photography happening back there between right. two people. That's so, right. So yeah, yeah, that kind of thing just happened. That's how it works. That's how it works. <laughs> so Laura, where if people want to like look at your work or connect with you online, you know, where, where should they go? Where, where do you website, live? Um, I'm based in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. and I use Instagram. I'm not on Facebook, but um, I do a lot on my Instagram, and I'm. Out of San Francisco, I'm based in a really beautiful little town called Pescadero. Mm -hmm. We only have 650 people. Love it. So I've managed to be in a small town near the city, which yes. just makes me really happy. I've been there for almost 10 years now. Good. Really love it. And I just overhauled my website, so that's why I want to send people. <laughs> <laughs> Say the URL one more time. Uh, so it's lauratillinghouse.com. Perfect. Yeah. Laura, thank you so thank much. Thank you for having me. You're this welcome. was really fun. You're welcome. Thank